I'm Aaron, and I'm I'm here on behalf of Sola Network, and I am talking to Clara Kim. Clara Kim, right? That's your last name, Clara yes. Kim. Yeah, and Clara, you're here for the Center for House Church Theology. Um, I've linked to many of your articles um, on our TGIF roundups, and I also reviewed um, the book Faith in the Wilderness, which I loved. I'll link all of those. But can I just hear in your own words, what is the Center for House Church Theology and what's your role? How'd you get involved? Well, the Center for House Church Theology is really trying to do something that I don't think has been done before, which is to um, connect us directly to the words and teachings of the house church in China. Now, it historically has, of course, as a, a, um, a church that is not officially sanctioned by the Chinese government, it has been cut off in many ways. They've been unable to travel to um, Christian conferences outside the country to teach, to, um, to kind of in officially um, be in conversation with the global church. Um, many of its pastors have been persecuted, arrested, have had to use pseudonyms even in their writing. And so it's um, been very difficult, if not impossible in the past to really know what was happening in the Chinese house church to really um, hear their words. And um, we now have, partly because of technology, just connections um, to some of these pastors and their writings. And we also have amazing translation software now and an amazing translation team headed up by Ryan Zhang that is able to give us high quality translations of um, uh, sermons, writings, things that are happening in cities in modern China. Um, which is also new, this sort of, uh, w there is a lot more in common now between cities like Shanghai and um, Chengdu and places like Boston and LA, because we're all living in this globalized world and we're all living in a, um, this sort of postmodern era where <laughs> tradition is kind of out the window and we're all sort of trying to figure out faith and life um, from scratch our parents' uh, faith and life doesn't really work anymore. So there's this amazing opportunity now to connect with what is being preached in these, um, these house churches, uh, many of them urban and many of them um, quite modern. Um, they're trying to evangelize and preach Christianity in a context where it's just foreign and where it's countercultural. And that is, that is the situation we're facing now across the world, mm. in the West, in the global South, in the East, and so it's just suddenly it's become very relevant to have this conversation, to listen and to exchange ideas and to hear preaching and to apply the gospel in completely new ways. Yeah. When you say house church, let's just get a, a basic definition going here, because when you say house church, I'm thinking, oh, like a small group that gathers in my house. Is that what you're talking about? Thank you for asking. Yes, we cannot assume that people are familiar <laughs> with the house church in China because it has been. Um, quote unquote underground or um, out of okay. official circulation for so long. The house church in mm -hmm. China is really um, what we would call um, the, um, in the past, it might've been called an underground church because it was actively persecuted in, in times like the Cultural Revolution under the communist mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so much underground anymore, but they are still called the house church and they still very much identify with these early kind of mostly rural, mostly um, anonymous churches that existed in the countryside and met in people's houses. Mm. And so today the house church might look urban, it might look bigger, it might meet in a public space, but they um, very much connect to this tradition of church history um, of, of people who just did not follow um, the government's supervision or guidelines. They just followed the faith, their, their own faith. It's the indigenous church in China that follows scripture over the Chinese government and refuses to come under their um, regulation. Mm. And there is persecution. You would call that persecution. There have been kind of varying eras of persecution throughout their history. Um, from what I've read, it's, it's uh, even before the communist party took over, there was persecution um, early in the 20th century. There was a lot of people who were mm. anti-Christian. Um, when the communists took over, they, they, they were persecuted again. Um, the Cultural Revolution was probably the most extreme example mm. where they really um, outlawed religion completely. And um, 
there have been eras when they sort of allow churches to operate without too much interference. Mm. Um, but we've seen, and under Xi Jinping, the current premier, there's been an increase in um, interference, you could say. And then you said that, like, kind of rural areas, right? So, like, are we, like, are we, are we imagining, or how should I envision this? Should I envision like a group, like how how big? like numerically is a is a single house church and then like what kind of building are they are they meeting in if any <laughs> I, i'm probably not an expert on answering this question because i sure i have not personally attended a house sure church. sure yeah my yeah. understanding is that they, they 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 really can vary again what unites them is really just their that they refuse to come under a communist supervision but they can be small or large they can be rural or urban they can be um in a person's house or they can be in a um, a high-rise building in a, in a city. Oh, um, okay. So the, 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 the way it looks, the denominations can vary. Um, the, 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 the way the church looks and, and functions can vary. Even their stance towards the government um, can vary. That some, some are really trying to, trying to get along mm. um, as well as they can and, and aren't trying to cause any trouble. Others are a little bit more confrontational and outspoken about um, the government has no no business um, regulating us, mm. but what they have in common is that devotion to um, to their faith and what mm. they read in scripture over and above what the state church says. Yes, and that's that's so beautiful, and I think something that that the book conveys really well. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, Clara, what what made you involved with with <laughs> this? Like, what what's your what's your what? What made you say, hey, I want to be involved with the house church theology? You're not, are you Korean? I am <laughs> yeah. Korean. I am, okay, I've, right. I've been to China. I've, I've traveled to Hong Kong and Xi'an as a tourist. Okay. I have no Chinese relatives, uh, except for maybe like a eighth century general. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. In my family history. <laughs> um, so I really don't have a strong personal connection to China. However, I worked at Redeemer at Presbyterian Church, uh, sorry, Redeemer City to City. Feels like I worked at Redeemer Church mm -hmm. for 12 years. I know, right? <laughs> and, um, I, um, so I became familiar with um, some of the people involved with who, who, what would become the Center for House Church Theology, mm. including Hannah Nation mm. and others. Um, S.E. Wong, who is our, our um, director of theological content. I, I, know, I know him quite well from my time at Redeemer. So mm. I, and I, I was actually involved at Redeemer and in, in, um, trying to get tr Tim Keller's books published in China as well. So I, mm. I became familiar with some people through that effort, um, some of the same people that I'm working with now. Um, so I, ju I just, I will just say that as a, an outsider originally to this movement, I was really struck by the, um, the prayers I heard some of these mm. Chinese leaders give, um, some of the, the, personal humility and maturity I saw and depth and the leaders I met and um, working with in, in the church planning world for 12 years you meet a lot of young <laughs> immature leaders <laughs> who are perhaps have high ambitions and may not be able to follow through for a lifelong commitment but mm. the people I met from China were different they were really um, committed for life and really had already um, uh, had to face some some real risk to do so um so when hannah hannah asked me to help her publish the 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 works of these mm -hmm. pastors that i and leaders that i had met over the years mm -hmm. I, I was a little skeptical because it's not <laughs> something that we've conventionally seen in america i do have some background in publishing so i'm a little familiar with the publishing world right but when i started reading their words i was again i was really struck by how wise and 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 um how wise they were and how Hearing from a different cultural perspective is so helpful. Um, I think in the West, we just have such a long church tradition that we start to say things and we hear the same sermons and we hear the same stories. And we even have like rituals and, and, and holidays and things that have evolved around Christianity just because it's Western culture. Sure. And we've lost that immediacy of how shocking and how challenging the Bible really is. And yes. these these leaders, because they're in China, because they, many of them are first the first in their in their families to be Christian, first generation Christians, and first mm. generation churches, mm. they're really dealing every day with how how countercultural 
and how beautiful and how difficult, like all these things that it is to be a Christian, things mm -hmm. that we're all experiencing now in a real mm -hmm. way, but our, our culture hasn't really caught up. Our culture is still sort of telling the same old fashioned Christian stories while these leaders in China are having to just speak from the heart in completely new ways. They're just trying to mm. come up with new words all the time mm. to describe the faith to their followers and to, to tell them what is really involved with following their faith, which is not mm -hmm. going to be a lot of comforting, inspiring words. It's, it's really difficult in China. Mm. So hearing their words is just, it shakes you up, it challenges you, it, it's refreshing, it's relevant. Um, I was really, I, I've been really um, a, a convert to, to the importance of hearing from these Chinese leaders, even though I am not Chinese and don't have <laughs> much of a background connected to China. Well, I appreciate your work and I share the same sentiments with you on, uh, on falling in love with the house church in China. Thank you so much for, for what you do. And it's, it's been my joy to kind of follow you guys along. Um, what's, what are the future plans for, for, um, for the for the center and then um you know is there another book on the way what can we expect from you guys well um hannah nation is our, our um managing director and she always has many book ideas <laughs> cooking in her brain <laughs> um it's a little scary for me to talk to her about what book ideas <laughs> are coming because she just has so many dreams and ambitions about books to come for out of the chinese house church which is wonderful i'm just sort of there to help her <laughs> practically make it happen um, we it's have awesome. a major book coming out this December about um, that's really inspired by the work of Wang Yi, who is okay. a, a pastor, one of the more famous house churches pastors in China, who is currently mm -hmm. in jail serving nine years. And um, this book was sort of his vision of um, telling the story of the house church. So it's really putting together some historical documents and some writings of, of major leaders in the house church. And then we've added some documents about his own church and what happened around his arrest and his church's persecution in 2018. Wow. So that church will be coming out from University Press Academic in December of this year. We're very excited about that. I think it's going to be a very important book for historians yeah, and theologians. Absolutely. And, um, people who are interested in China at all. Mm. Um, and we have just lots more <laughs> topics to explore. We, we're going to continue <laughs> to do articles on our website that are free as well as books with different different kinds of books with different kinds of publishers and um yeah that's all i can say for now i think but there's there's some exciting projects in the pipeline yeah that's that's amazing i cannot wait for everything that you guys are going to do thank you so much claire for the time <laughs> thank you